Welcome to the Line Life Podcast. I'm Jeff Postelway, Senior Editor of TND World, and today we're bringing you more stories of the grit, courage, and inspirational teamwork that it takes to be a line worker. Hi, this is Amy Fishbach, Field Editor for TND World Magazine. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Line Life Podcast. In this episode of In Case You Missed It, we're featuring the article 2023 Lyman's Rodeo Roundup from the December 2023 TND World print issue. This article was written by Amy Fishbach and also narrated by Amy Fishbach. 2023 Lyman's Rodeo Roundup. A record number of line workers competed to be the best of the best at the International Lyman's Rodeo. Whether it's the middle of the night or the middle of a storm, line workers are ready to respond. During one special week each year, however, the line trade has the opportunity to connect, collaborate, and compete. Competitor Corey Roosh traveled from Ontario, Canada to Kansas City for the event, and she said there are three things she loves about the rodeo, the morale, the pride, and the camaraderie. Her journeyman team, including Rudy Carrick and Richard Smedley, each have about 35 years in the line trade. Over the years, they've made good friends and forged bonds with other competitors. We are proud and happy to be here, said Roosh, whose team placed second in the senior division in 2019. Apprentices and journeyman line workers came from around the world to showcase their skills in front of their loved ones, supporters, and spectators. Bryce Zahn, a fist step apprentice for Capital Electric Line Builders, had the opportunity to compete in front of his family, including his wife and four kids, ranging from 4 to 11 years old. There's definitely a lot of pride involved in what we do, Zahn said. It's neat that families can come out here and get a glimpse of the activities and dangers of the job and see what their heroes do. Expanding Event The 39th International Lyman's Rodeo busted records with soaring attendance and participation. Case in point, the event had 1,316 competitors, 292 three-member journeyman teams, 541 judges, 100 volunteers, and 5,328 verified registrations. In addition, 430 learned about safety in the line trade at the International Lyman's Radio Safety and Training Conference, 3,100 swap shirts and stories at the Lyman's Barbecue and Trade Night, and 4,721 celebrated at the awards banquet. A total of 198 exhibitors also showcased the latest tools and technologies at the Lyman's Expo, which expanded into a new hall space. In other words, it was a record year for the rodeo across the board. Susan Blazer, the Lyman Training Coordinator at Metropolitan Community College, Kansas City, topped out in 1992 as a journeyman line worker for Kansas City Power & Light, now Evergy. She said the event has grown exponentially over the last few decades. Coming out and seeing all the changes is just unbelievable, Blazer said. After working the line trade for 21 years, she now helps to prepare the line workers of the future for careers in the line trade. During the competition, the students help the judges tie off rescue dummies for the apprentice and journeyman Hurtman rescue events. They get to see the real world, Blazer said. This is where I tell them, You're going to come and see the best of the best. They're really excited about helping them out. It gives them that pride that they can look forward to each year as they go towards an apprenticeship in the future. Uniting the line trade. For apprentices and journeyman line workers, the International Lyman's Rodeo is like the Super Bowl of competitions for the line trade. Some competitors practice year round for the opportunity to showcase their skills at the event. Over the years, the line workers have competed in typical Kansas weather that can be sunny and blazing hot one minute and drizzling windy and cold the next. This year, the International Lyman's Rodeo kicked off to a chilly start as an overcast sky hung over the rodeo grounds. While line workers' loved ones huddled on the sidelines in blankets, the competitors slung their harnesses over their shoulders, packed up their tool carts, and traveled to their first event, saying it was a perfect day for climbing. The weather is just a little bit unfavorable, but linemen go out in all kinds of weather, said Mike Strummel, a former rodeo competitor for Midwest Energy and now a volunteer for the International Linemen's Rodeo Association. I was here as a lineman myself competing for a number of years, and it's great to come back and see all the camaraderie. 
Line workers may come together to compete to be the best of the best at the rodeo, but at the end of the day, it's like one big family. If you're a lineman, you compete against each other, but the cool thing about it is that they will be sharing tips and tricks that will help each other on the event, Strummel said. To be recognized on the award stage, it often takes hard work and practice, said John Morrison, sub foreman for Hydro One, which had 11 competitors, including six journeymen and five apprentices, five judges, support staff, and coaches. Prior to the Lyman's Rodeo Week, the utility organized a boot camp, met as a unit, and prepared for the events. We practiced to the best of our ability on the events that we knew about. And for the mystery ones, we'll see what happens for those, said Morrison, who is attending the Lyman's Rodeo Week for the first time. For the ones that we've been practicing for, we're confident that we're going to give it a good run. He said the experience of competing before is a huge asset for the line workers. Coming here for the first time can be overwhelming because it's so big. In order to win, you have to have your mind straight that you can be quick, but it's got to also be clean. This year, all the competitors, from the First Step Apprentices to the members of the Senior Journeyman teams, had to wear full fall protection, and no free climbing was allowed. According to the ILRA, this regulation will drive safety to the next level by not allowing anyone to fall off the pole. In addition, it will put everyone on a level playing field. Michael Simmons, Assistant Business Manager of the IBEW Local 126 in Philadelphia, said his local had two journeyman teams and five apprentices at this year's rodeo, and he was supportive of the change. We went down this route in the past where some Lyman's rodeos didn't want full fall protection, but we're out here to have fun, and someone getting hurt out here is unacceptable, Simmons said. We're using 100% full fall protection in the field, and we want to use it here as well. I think it's a great change. Apprentices go for the gold. At the International Lyman's Rodeo, the competition is split into the Apprentice and Journeyman Divisions and then further subdivided into Military, Contractor, IOU, REA, and Muni. Over the last five years, the Apprentices have taken their 100-point written test the day before the rodeo, which helps to streamline and expedite events on the day of competition. Zachary Gao, an apprentice for Perdinale's Electric Cooperative, Swept the apprentice division with a top score on the written test, the fastest overall time of 23 minutes, 3 seconds, and 3 milliseconds, and the highest total event points of 494. To prepare for the competition, Gao spent a lot of time studying the Lyman's and Cableman's handbook. I would say practicing really helped me to build my confidence and be prepared, Gao said. Gao, who also topped the apprentice division last year, captured more event points and finished in less time in 2023. He attributes the back-to-back -back win to being as smooth and precise as possible and putting in his best effort using everything he's worked on and learned. It's an honor to receive such a high achievement against the best of the best in the world, two years in the row, Gao said. We put in a lot of work to become the best of the best line workers. We could be for our members and communities and although we don't do it for the accolades, it's nice to be recognized for our efforts. To earn the maximum points and the least number of deductions, the apprentices had to compete the pole climb, the hurt man rescue, and two mystery events swiftly and safely. For the first mystery event, competitors had a drop dead time of 15 minutes to replace a guy strap on the span guy attachment on a 12 foot pole using a hoist conductor grip strap and proper hand tool with no knives. Riley Klein, an apprentice for Salt River Project, finished the event more than 19 seconds ahead of the next competitor coming out on top. For the second mystery event, the apprentices participated in a simulated dead and grounded event to replace a bad 15 kV arrestor located on a bracket on the side of a 40-foot pole. Austin LeFevre of JEA captured a win with a perfect score of 100 points and a time of 3 minutes and 36 seconds. During the pole climb event, apprentices all had one goal in mind, to scale the 40-foot pole safely, smoothly, and professionally without breaking the raw egg. After carefully placing the raw egg in a small bucket and carrying it up in their teeth, they had to scale the wood pole. When they reached the top, they grabbed an empty bucket on the J-hook, dropped it down to the wood chips below, and placed the raw eggs in their mouths. They then hung the new bucket on the hook and began their descent. Time stopped when their feet hit the ground.
Breaking, cracking, or denting the egg racked up a 10-point deduction, enough to dash their hopes of getting on the award stage. A total of 313 apprentices finished the event with a perfect score of 100 points, but only one apprentice led the pack. Derek DeCastro, an apprentice for National Grid with the fastest time of 44 seconds and 84 milliseconds. Chris Onda of Core Electric Cooperative scored 100 points in the pole climb and finished in the top quarter of the apprentice division this year. To prepare, he and the other competitors from his cooperative focused on conditioning, pole climbing, practice, and building camaraderie. As a third step apprentice, he is looking forward to soon be competing in the journeyman division in the near future. We have a great journeyman team this year, and I think if we can continue building upon it and getting more experience under our belt, the less nerves we will have, Onda said. We had a great time last year, and we're excited to knock it out this year. Teaming up in the journeyman division. Once apprentices top out as journeymen, they can compete in teams of three in the International Lyman's Rodeo. While all the journeyman teams gave it their all, One team earned the coveted Best of the Best trophy, the IBEW Local 47 trio of Kurt Norris, Toby Claude, and Brian Wheeler. The team scored a perfect 400 points with zero deductions and completed all of the events, the pole climb, Hartman Rescue, and two mystery events, in a time of 27 minutes, 11 seconds, and 58 milliseconds. As in years past, the journeyman teams didn't know the rules or regulations for the mystery events until they arrived in Kansas City and picked up their team books during rodeo week. For the first mystery event, the teams used rubber gloves, blankets, line guards, and other tools to replace a Brooks braceless wood cross arm using a Hastings model 5047 temporary conductor support arm. Two journeymen climbed the pole, while the third team member served as the groundman during the event. Another Local 47 team from Southern California Edison of Richard Lopez, Brian Casas, and Marcos Hernandez had a five-second lead on the nearest competitor with a time of 12 minutes, 34 seconds, and 44 milliseconds. For the second mystery event, the journeyman had to wear Class 2 rubber gloves to replace both primary jumpers while eco-potential grounding. The winning journeyman team of Wheeler, Claude, and Norris scored the most points in the least time for the simulated de-energized 23kV event. Both climbers had to work as a team to replace the existing jumpers across the double dead ends. An IBEW local 1245-47 journeyman team also knocked out the fastest time in the journeyman pole climb with members Brandon Gloria, David Angove, and Jacob Hunt. Duke Energy's journeyman team of Miles Bell, Jordan Henderson and Heath Burrell went first place in the Hurtman Rescue. The Duke Energy team of Jay Timpton, Keith Griffin, and Sandy Barnhill, 2022 Lima's Rodeo Champions, return this year to place first in the senior division. National Grid's Alex Bigneau, who placed second in the apprenticeship division two years ago, also came back to the International Lima's Rodeo, but this time he was competing in the journeyman level. He competed twice as an apprentice and twice as a journeyman. I'm going to keep coming out here as many times as I can until I can't, he said. You get to meet so many different men and women who do this kind of work. That's huge. This year, he was competing on a team with other National Grid journeymen from the same location, so they're able to get together to practice events from previous years. At the Lyman's Expo the day before the competition, he shared his game plan. My plan is to get out there and give it everything I got, he said. Hopefully I'll walk the stage, but I want my teammates to have fun. Tim Hanna, who was at the Lyman's Rodeo Week, supporting the apprentices from IBEW Local 145, encourages others to come out and celebrate the line trade at next year's rodeo, which will be celebrating its 40th anniversary. The rodeo is just really something to see, Hanna says. You don't see that many poles anywhere else. To listen to the Lion Life podcast episodes featuring the voice of competitors, supporters, and families, visit lionlife.podbean.com. You can also view photo galleries and videos from the event on our website at tdworld.com backslash electric hyphen utility hyphen operations. This episode of the Lion Life podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Amy Fishbach. It was produced by Jeff Postlewaite. That's me. To listen to past episodes, visit www.tdworld.com backslash podcasts or find us at Podbean. You could also drop us a voice memo or message 
at linelifepodcast at gmail.com with your comments on this episode. We'd love to hear from you. Please follow this show on Podbean or your favorite podcasting app to be updated when new episodes are released. Thank you for listening.